As they plan a nuclear attack on Kiev, Russian experts declare, maybe it is time we stopped hesitating. The Kremlin-controlled media has urged Moscow to conduct a nuclear strike against Kiev to prevent the Ukrainian war from spilling to Russian territory. The Russian state-controlled media has urged the Kremlin to launch a nuclear assault on the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. Moscow analysts appear on the Kremlin-controlled network Russia 1 advocated launching a deadly nuclear assault immediately to prevent the Ukraine conflict from spreading to Russian territory. The television presenters stated the baseless assertion that Ukrainian troops were ready to conquer the Russian-Ukrainian border towns of Voluki and Shebekino. Former Kremlin intelligence operative Leonid Reshetnikov said on the Russia 1 network that an attack is being planned, maybe not one, but two or a kind of raid to grab Shebekino or Voluki. Ukraine and the West must execute the most prestigious attack conceivable against Russia. We forget that one of the West's primary goals about Russia is not merely to weaken it, but also to replace its government. He said that one of the West's primary goals was to oust Vladimir Putin from his post as president of Russia. State television personality Olga Skabieva inquired, it is only that in the case of Shebekino and Veliki, God forbid, a nuclear missile assault on Kiev would be unquestionable, no? Reshetnikov said, we hesitate constantly, and now. It is time we stopped hesitating, said the Russia One host. Reshetnikov agreed, yes, it is time. The report followed President Putin's poorly disguised threats of a nuclear strike. In his address announcing the partial mobilization of reserve troops, President Putin emphasized his preparedness to use nuclear weapons to preserve Russia's territorial integrity. In the case of a danger to the territorial integrity of our nation and in order to protect Russia and our people, we will use every possible weapon system, he said. This statement is not a bluff. In the same address, he stated that Western powers had backed the Ukrainian bombardment of the Zaporizhia region, which has the giant nuclear power plant in Europe. He referred to the assaults in the area as nuclear blackmail, notwithstanding Ukrainian officials' claims that Russia was responsible for the missile strikes near the power facility. Vladimir Putin had earlier said that an assault on Ukraine's acquired lands would constitute an attack on Russia. However, Moscow's troops have subsequently lost thousands of kilometers of captured territory to the Ukrainian counteroffensive. This territory loss includes the southern area of Kherson, which President Putin stated would be annexed together with Zaporizhia, Lugansk, and Donetsk. During an October conference, President Putin was questioned about the possibility of nuclear Armageddon. As long as nuclear weapons exist, he said, there will always be a risk of their use. However, he referred to the possibility of a worldwide nuclear war as primitive. He accused the West of inflaming Russian threats of a nuclear attack to provoke a response to the invasion of Ukraine. An official from the Kremlin threatens to hunt Zelensky and his associates across the globe. A senior Moscow official has warned President Zelensky as Russia escalates its horrific missile attack on Ukraine. Andrei Lugovoy has pledged that Moscow's agents would follow President Volodymyr Zelensky and his inner circle for the rest of their lives throughout the globe. The deputy of the State Duma made explicit reference to intelligence services in the United Kingdom and the United States and blasted efforts to give refuge to Ukrainian leaders. During his diatribe, carried on the state-controlled television network Russia One, the former bodyguard promised that Kremlin troops would pursue justice with vigor. Despite being sought by British authorities in connection with the poisoning of former intelligence officer Alexander Litvinenko, Lugovoy continues to hold a prominent position in Russian politics. In footage posted by the creator of Russian Media Monitor, Julia Davis, Lugovoy told Russia One, we must pursue justice on our own. The members of Zelensky's inner circle should be the first to ascend the gallows. We should not be bashful about it, he continued. In the future, we will need to pursue them around the globe. I am sure that all of them have received assurances from American and British intelligence services. I am sure that every single one of them has hidden, camouflaged residences in California or elsewhere where they intend to spend the rest of their lives. Their lives will not be very successful or lucky. Given Lugovoy's past, the danger of a worldwide hunt is a particularly ominous warning.
British police still seek the state Duma representative in connection with the 2006 poisoning death of Alexander Litvinenko. On the day he became sick, Lugavoy met Litvinenko, a former officer who had fled to the United Kingdom. Later, Litvinenko died in the hospital when physicians confirmed that he had been poisoned with a deadly dosage of polonium-210, which caused acute radiation syndrome. Despite a 2021, European Court of Human Rights judgment that Lugovoy and his colleague Dmitry Kovtin were culpable for the murder, Russia has refused to extradite Lugovoy at the request of British authorities. President Zelensky has continued to denounce Russia's barbaric terror campaign in Ukraine despite Kremlin authorities' warnings. Wednesday, the President of Ukraine declared that the terrorist state continues to wage war on citizens and civilian property. He accused Russia of a missile attack on a Vilnius maternity hospital that resulted in the death of a newborn and the injury of at least one other person. After shelling killed two people, he also accused the Kremlin of bombing a medical facility in Kupiansk. The president stated on Telegram that the adversary has chosen to attempt once again to accomplish through terror and murder what he has not been able to do for the last nine months and will not be able to do. Instead, he will be held accountable for all of the harm he did to our nation. According to the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense, the Kremlin has switched its assault strategy from destroying electrical infrastructure to targeting vulnerable medical institutions. According to intelligence analysis, Russia has used chiefly uncurred aerial vehicles against tactical military sites and the Ukrainian power infrastructure. However, recent Russian commanders presumably also want uncurred aerial vehicles acquired from Iran to prioritize medical institutions as targets of opportunity and hit them with guided missiles if discovered. Due to an expanded campaign of weapons attacks in Ukraine, the Russian military has likely virtually depleted its existing supply of uncurred aerial vehicles, according to the ministry. The United Kingdom deploys 129 miles per hour Sea King helicopters to Ukraine to demonstrate its unwavering support. The decision to provide Sea King helicopters to Ukraine marks the first time the United Kingdom has supplied human crewed aircraft to the ex Soviet nation. According to a report, the United Kingdom is deploying helicopters to Ukraine to bolster its assistance as Kiev continues to fight Vladimir Putin's invasion. The support package will consist of Sea King helicopters and 10,000 artillery rounds. The first three helicopters destined for Ukraine have already arrived in the former Soviet state. The Westland WS-61 Sea King is roughly 22 meters long and 6,201 pounds in weight. The aircraft is powered by two Rolls-Royce Gnome engines and has a maximum cruise speed of 129 miles per hour at sea level. Westland WS-61 Sea King aircraft are no longer produced. However, their refurbishment at current market pricing costs around £5 million. Throughout his participation in the Falklands War, Prince Andrew flew one. Additionally, the helicopters participated in the Gulf War, the Balkans War, and the Iraq War. Ben Wallace, the Defense Secretary of the United Kingdom, revealed a new assistance package before a meeting with his European colleagues in Norway. On board HMS Queen Elizabeth, Britain will welcome ministers from 12 European nations, including officials from Germany and Poland. At the summit, defense ministers will address expanding assistance for Kyiv and confronting the danger posed by Moscow. Mr. Wallace further said that 10,000 extra shells, in addition to previous agreements to equip 1,000 surface-to-air missiles and 125 anti-aircraft weapons, would assist the Ukrainian military in defending the seized region surrounding Kherson. The Secretary of Defense said that our support for Ukraine is unshakable. These extra artillery rounds will aid Ukraine in securing the territory it has just regained from Russia. The United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense also cautioned that a purported Ukrainian strike on an oil facility in Novorossiysk might expose Russia. According to an information update, Russian commanders would undoubtedly be worried about threats to the amphibious landing ship flotilla headquartered in Novorossiysk. Since the Kerch Bridge was broken in October, these warships have played a more vital role in feeding Russian troops in Ukraine since they are relatively dangerous without escorts. Additionally, it would diminish Russia's already diminished maritime dominance in the Black Sea.